Okay, and we are live. Um, so let's just let me set up some things here. Okay, looks good. So tonight I um I decided to stream a little bit of uh, reverse engineering. Um, we're gonna be focusing on uh, some MIPS. Uh, binaries that uh, I could extract from uh, this um, cable router from Technicolor. It's the 7, uh, 7210 uh, model. Uh, it's uh, You can find more information on my blog because I've been playing around with it for uh, some time now. Um, I have some bugs reported to Technicolor so uh, that are still not fixed. Uh, so we aren't we aren't going to focus on that, um, but we are going to focus on uh, some other binaries and just to uh, show and uh, let you guys and gals understand how uh, to go about uh, looking at MIPS disassembly listings and all these other things. Okay, so. Uh, I already extracted the files from the firmware. Um, I have also a video on that in uh, already a stream about that. Uh, you can find more info on how to do it uh, from there. Uh, I was able to get the firmware uh, from the router because I found a vulnerability on the router that gave me uh, basically remote code execution and that allowed me to extract the flash uh, contents from the router and that's these files here that you see here the image files is basically the flash contents of the various partitions um, all on, on the router um, that, bug sp that specific bug uh, was already fixed uh, you can also find some uh, details of it in my um, in my blog. Uh, in any case, let's see. Let's select one of the the targets to look at. Uh, so there are a lot of binaries here that are quite standard kind of thing. So the BRCTL, uh, BusyBox. They are all kind of usual Linux um, utilities. But if you look at, for instance, MSC app, uh, is not clearly. Um, SMB app is also one of the uh, tools that are binaries that isn't um, very uh, common, or what I mean, it's, it's not a Linux utility. Um, set apps ver, which probably means set applications version, remote API, RMT shutdown, RPC things. So if we do, they're all binaries and they are all MIPS and they are all 32 bits. You can see that from the info. UB, UBI make MK vol, so UBI make volume, UBI info, UBI remove volume, RM vol, UBI RM vol. So these are tools that are used to manage to manage uh, UBI volumes, which is the um, the firmware is stored in the flash as a or well not the firmware but the file system is stored in the flash as a UBI volume. And that's why um, it has these two utilities. Let's have a look at SBIN. What do we have here? Okay, we look like BCMM server. Doesn't look like um, something common from Linux. Hot plug, maybe. Not sure. Um, so let's just go to bin because there's a lot of binaries there. So we're gonna probably start um, with MSC app. So I'm just gonna go back. And one of the things I 
showed in a, in a previous stream uh, where uh, about the firmware reverse engineering uh, is that with key QMU MU, you can actually quite easily run binaries using a change root and let's just try and run this one I already tried it <laughs> just to see if it worked and uh, I tried them all actually but um, so you can see here you have some output and it listens on port 4918 so if we if we let's just say if we do a net stat now np type less we might see don't see yeah, yeah here it is you can see it's it's listening in all addresses so we can even interact uh, with this service um, because even though it's being emulated it has access to all the other uh, usual stuff like uh, the, the like the network stack uh, so it's very useful for your um, uh, it's very useful to have this capability because then you can actually interact with the service and try to exploit the service without having it uh, run on the actual hardware so it makes our life a lot easier easier so one of the these slamblers slash debuggers i like to use um, especially because i don't have the pro version of ida i have the fr freeware version of ida it doesn't allow me to use uh, to debug or disassemble uh, mips and uh, arm and other types of more exotic architectures um, so i like to use cutter uh, it works works quite well it's still under very heavy development so uh, but it's it's been quite a useful um, uh, tool works really nicely so let's just Oi. <laughs> thank you Mac that's anyways uh, so desktop let's just open it let's not do any auto analysis because that's just not worthwhile and so here you can see uh, i'm gonna reduce some some of the windows make them a little bit smaller uh, i don't need this all of this information so this is the main uh, window for cutter which is basically a front end for the R2 uh, debugger. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name. Uh, in any case, I will just enable uh, assembly emulation, so ICL emulation, so we can because uh, this this MIPS code as it is compiled. Um, it does it's very weird how it references uh, strings um, uh, so it's very hard for you to get references uh, from them so with the um, emulation it makes it a lot easier um, there was also I think I am missing something no maybe this no uh, how is it how do i run that um, anyways i don't think well let's try it like this and see how it goes so the first thing is to find is to find the main function so here it is and let's just do find function here oh, maybe not okay so it works I don't need. and one of the useful things uh, from Kata as well and it's built on top of uh, R2 is that uh, it has a nice uh, 
graph view of functions. So you can see here uh, the function graphs and as you can see here how it basically references strings is a little bit weird because you are basically uh, it's loading a, a0 is adding to a0 v0 and plus so it's starting on a0 I think yeah add the sign and you can see here one of an, uh, another useful feature is this you have a little bit of an op opcode description so if you kind of forget or you don't remember or you don't know at all uh, what it means um, then you know so it's basically it adds uh, two constants um, so it's basically adding v0 with uh, twen uh, 29 9c uh, and then it starts it in a0 and one of and then for instance on uh, a1 it starts 1 because it's adding 0 with 1 in a2 it starts 19 because it's adding 0 with 19 and then it's starting v1 which comes from some dereference of v0 and then it calls um, f right and you can see here for instance this is an error right saying that it cannot open the socket uh, but if you go down a little bit you can see you cannot find port number so this is our er error handling from the the application and I don't remember if I can zoom it out so you can see here a bunch of messages one of the things I like in reverse engineering is that sometimes the, the strings make your life very easy uh, all debug things and this sort of output allows you to kind of pinpoint where uh, the logic of uh, of the application is taking you or what the application is actually doing um, so let's just go through this so you can see all uh, all the strings are in here um, Let's see if we can find some interesting strings. Let's see. Okay, there's no system or something like that. And you can see here all, all the messages. And switching back to Linux, you can see here media server control application. So it's basically a message, and for sure there will be here some media server application somewhere you can see for instance we can already see from the strings that it has a get state command a send config command so something that is related with uh, most likely the socket receiving those commands so just by looking at strings seeing anything another thing we can look at is at the imports uh, yeah but there's nothing it doesn't seem maybe we can maybe it's vulnerable to some buffer overflows um, because it's using unsafe string copies or string LAN um, but that highly depends on whether the string copy is uh, copying user provided input into a fixed buffer um, is highly dependent on that so that would be one place to look for vulnerabilities yeah it doesn't seem to have much So let's just look at the graph again. I would like um, okay. 
So So here, let's start with that. So you can see, let's start from the beginning then. So some variables set up. some printing to somewhere and then we have the socket so one of the things I wanted to say as well is that MIPS has a very it doesn't have a standard calling uh, convention like uh, x86 has and uh, and, the, and x64 as well so basically it really depends on the compiler the compiler decides what uh, what the calling convention is uh, and for this uh, one, it's clear that they use A0, A1, A2, and probably A3 and A4, and it's fourth. Um, if it has an A4, I don't really know. But um, to pass on parameters to the functions that it calls. Um, so we can see here that this uh, calling socket. So this is the Linux function socket with two, one, and then zero. That's great. So let me just check here. But um, let's make it a decimal value, 1050. And five sixty. Okay, this doesn't really ring a bell. In any case, he tries to open a socket. Probably is uh, specifying that it's UDP and uh, the inet, so basically IP uh, stack. So it's not a raw socket or anything like that. It's a normal TCP UDP socket. Um, and then if it fails to open socket, it will exit with a status code of one um, it sets some socket options probably also related with UDP and TCP oh here it is something interesting so it's doing some conversions and you can see here this is likely the address or the port I mean uh, so let's make it decimal and yeah so this is the address so it's converting this uh, number into something that can be passed on to a bind uh, a0 yeah probably and then v0 v1 and A2 is, uh, is 10. And so if we look back, we can see here that is listening on port 49181, which is exactly what is doing here. So that's okay. Let's continue on. So it binds. And then if it cannot bind port, it gives you a branch of, it does the uh, error handling, and it exits, so we don't really care about that. And it all comes down to this function here. Calling the function signal, then it's doing some f printf so probably is writing to some um, some log file maybe uh, that is it's probably what he's doing it has this global variable kind of weird but it might be interesting it might be important another thing i'm seeing here is that is setting a buffer to zero uh, and the buffer comes from v0 so in its fp 
as well is in the frame pointer I think I feel in uh, frame pointer um, and it's setting and this is probably the size so it's setting it to more than uh, two kilobytes and this is probably this is in bytes so it's more than uh, no yeah more than two kilobytes um, so two kilobytes would be 2048 this is 52 so four more bytes so maybe it's because they are uh, ensuring that is zero I don't know I'm trying to ensure it's zero weird anyways and then here it is so it's the receive from and you can see here also the receive from is also using the it will receive only the same amount that we probably allocated on this buffer and that we said it would be zero so every time so so every time before the receive it sets the buffer to zero it seems like it because I am seeing a lot of arrows coming back to this block of code so it's likely a loop where they are uh, they opened up the socket they bound they binded to that socket on a specific port and then they are just looping with the receive from um, the commands that uh, the tool can understand So if it gives an error, it says could not receive if it ends this receive from receive v from is an error, it will exit with could not receive data, which is okay, and then it will go back for sure. So if we can I add no, it's hard to click it doesn't highlight but yeah it comes back to the receive from so that's quite obvious if there isn't any error it will probably start to compare stuff in the buffer I think so the buffer must be a1 it's in v1 so is the 5 FP5C is in FP5C and you can see here in MEMSET as well the V0 which is then passed as the first parameter to MEMSET which is usually the destination buffer or the, the buffer that you want to zero out um, and it's also stored it's in uh, 0x5C in reference to FP and that's what we are seeing here for the receive from it's also passing as uh, as the buffer where did I saw it yeah it's here v1 and then you move as an a1 to the receive v from so that's that's okay um, seems to be where they are gonna store the data and then it starts doing some comparisons it says MSC got a command before initialization initialization so this is an error and it will probably look back look back if we follow the arrow it will probably oops, sorry it will probably look back to the main loop yeah so it goes back to the main loop it's interesting because I thought you could highlight the errors but apparently not or maybe I'm not zoomed out zoomed in enough I don't know uh, in any case if it doesn't if the initialization has been done it goes straight into here this function here received invalid command 
and then it goes back otherwise uh, otherwise this is interesting because this doesn't tell me much seems like it ends here at least the graph which is weird uh, doesn't seem like it should so let's just look at this disassembly so if we end up here in the knob and we look at the disassembly yeah. so for some reason the graph is kind of failing or maybe I am not because it's jumping somewhere v0 so it's probably the, 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 that's why it's not it's not doing this reference right i think maybe it's not doing the referencing right but any any case we can see here like the receive enable command so the code goes on in child process we can see here oh look oh we can see here it's executing something so it's calling the exec l function and you can see here the command that is uh, that it is trying to execute and it's one of the binaries that you can find in the in the firmware that's good probably some and then here some more error handling and if it's, it's a serious error it just exits you can see here here actually and its status code is minus one, minus one. Uh, let's see what else we can find in parent process so it's forking so we sh saw some uh, uh, child in child process in parent process so it's clearly uh, forking itself oh yeah I have here a nice function make acknowledge package probably packet this is probably how it sends uh, the responses back you receive the disable command ready to kill server okay so we have more or less a, an idea of how what this is doing but it seems to be very it seems to be very limited it seems that it only it will only launch the that binary the bcm something something server um, yeah you can see here it doesn't seem to be get state yeah it doesn't seem to rescan let me see what the rescan command does command does okay it's it basically it will send signals to <laughs> to that binary basically it's it's a binary to manage another binary i'm wondering why they just didn't add this functionality to the main binary but maybe restrictions or constraints that not really clear uh, okay so let's just start poking with it i guess um send some uh some random packets some random hmm. interesting trying to opening some configuration file server not enabled
okay let's let's try that let's try to uh, one of the things I like to do is uh, use Python so let's just like to use Python to do these sort of things and usually I set up a Python environment so that I don't get my main system my main Python libraries um, corrupted in any way um, let me just check which version of Python this is 2.7.15 okay I usually like to, to work with um, Python tree, um, but this should suffice for what we want to do. Uh, one of the things as well is that I'm not very good at remembering how you call in uh, Python. So, well, at least how you send, how you develop software in Python. What I mean is, how do you send? UDPs or packets or all these sort of things in Python. So I'm just gonna, I just Google it, makes it easier, just to be sure, not to waste too much time. So let's just call it um, test.py. Let's just be like that. And, uh, wait, okay, import socket. And we do something like let's define some variables UDP or no. uh, address it's gonna be it's for sure gonna be localhost because it's listening in all ports so it has to be local in all uh, addresses in the any address so 0, .0, .0, 0, 0 0.0.0.0 so we can do that the port is 49181 4981 right. 181 I'm very bad because I'm speaking while I'm talking so it's sometimes it's not <laughs> easy uh, I'm, I'm speaking and I'm thinking at the same time that's what I mean to see how I fail at life it's so sad um, let's just send it uh, so we want more than two kilobytes of message but um, let's just send a little bit less I think I think it's more practical if we send a little bit less um, because it's not like we saw that the receive from only receives the amount of uh, packets that uh, that are allowed in the buffer that the buffer has space to um, so let's just let's just make let's just assume that um, you don't need any more packets uh, or any more bytes. Uh, let's assume it's safe. I think it's completely safe anyway, but so it's not worthwhile for us. No, it's so it allocates that size. It zeros it out and then it receives only that size. So it's not gonna be a problem, I think. So let's just send it. Um, send it this let's just send this just just to test a socket a socket f let and socket dot so for UDP is sock underscore dgram and sock 
dot send to and we're gonna send our packet and to the address port as defined and then let's just let's just get some things out of it uh, I don't care about this one uh, sock dot receive from and we're gonna receive like I don't know make it big uh, let it be uh, let's make it the same size as the main packet never know and then let's just print it hold on let's see if this works Ooh. maybe because this is uh, probably because this is python Invalid syntax. Hmm. Uh, syntax, why is it invalid syntax? What am I doing wrong? Oh, yeah, right. My bad. So, missing a comma here. Uh, let me just see. Oh yes, here it is. Okay. We can do s some other cool stuff. Let's just try this one. Oh, must be string or buffer, not list. Okay, so this doesn't work, probably not in Python uh, 2.0, 2.7, I mean. So let's just, um, this, this is just, this is not related with the error, the error is here, so I'm just gonna, uh, let's just, um, and let's make it then a string. So let's do this. And let's try that. Line is not defined, of course it's not, because I'm lame, so, and I forgot that this got missing. This piece is missing. Oh, here it is. So we got something out of it. Oh, okay, so let's make it return the tuple so let's just call it uh, server so we can see here so initialized um, so if we come here hey <laughs> we have a message so this is something that we saw already here in the beginning um, It's probably easier just to come here again. Go here. And cannot open socket, blah, blah, blah. Cannot, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. Could not receive data. And here it is. Cannot. Got a comment before initialization. Replied with the initialized moment. So, how do you initialize? It's gonna be interesting. Um, okay, so we know that the buffer is stored in FP, offset by 5C, is in uh, FP plus 5C. V1, we move it here. We know that we're gonna receive up to that value. Let's let's try to make this bigger than that value. Oops, sorry. 
I think I've done that fairly. See well, how it how it replies. It's probably gonna say that it's an invalid comment or it's just gonna basically ignore it. Um, so let's multiply this by so one more byte. Let's send it. No, it still is it still says just initialized. So it doesn't really matter. So it doesn't really matter. So let's just um, okay. Let's look at the disassembly again. FP. So he's doing some loading. Then he's storing some values. Storing some words, I think. Stars a word into something. Okay. That's okay. Well, I don't think. What is this the one? Okay, so the branching happens here. And you can see here. Okay, interesting. It's interesting. Seems that it only starts to look at the contents of the packet in this function. In this function, in this um, part of the code here. And then it decides whether it's initialized. So most likely it's checking here in here it's in this area here is checking if some uh, global variable or whatnot uh, that the code that uh, the, the application is initialized if it's not then it's going to check if the command uh, if the command is a uh, initialization co uh, command and if it's not it just errors out if it is then it probably starts looking at this uh, the 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 rest of the the contents of the packet itself uh if any anybody has a question or anything or wants to chime in with some uh, some tidbit uh, <laughs> don't be shy i'm looking at the, the chat so uh, we can make it a little bit more interactive than just me speaking um so so it's loading an alf word, alf word. Um, so an alf word would be a short, what we would call in uh, x86 a short, I think. Uh, a word is four bytes. No, that's a double word, an alf word. So it's loading one byte. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's loading one byte. Um, Yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, double word is four bytes, word is two bytes, and then a half word or a byte, basically, I think. Hmm. And then it's adding five to V0, and it's comparing the result, and if it is equal, it jumps here. Okay, so let's change our packet to have 0, 05 here it's loading again loading the same value from the, the the buffer is storing it somewhere else it's loading it to v1 and then what is it doing it's 
set on less than immediate and signed. That's the description of the opcode. So probably this says hmm. Let me check SL MIPS SLTIE Let me see what this thing does. Set on less than uh, so basically the description for this opcode is if S is less than the unsigned immediate. So S would be V in this case would be V1. If V1 is less than V0. Oh no, sorry. No, sorry. If okay, I, I see it. So basically what he's doing is if this value here in v1 which we got from our buffer is less than uh, the unsigned immediate which is this value here x22 uh, hexadecimal 22 then t is set to 1 if it it's 0 otherwise okay so okay that's cool and so ba basically if if the value is higher than 22 which will no never be which in this case it will never be so this uh, because we are sending the initialization packet which needs to be 5 so if this will never be then this will never be this will be zero this will always be one so if this always be one it we follow the red arrow and we can see here ooh, that's we get to to okay interesting so we are seeing here as well another rule is that the, the commands cannot be more than the initial value cannot be higher than x22 because otherwise it's an invalid command or am I getting it right wrong yeah exactly no I'm getting it right because if v1 is less than x22 then this is v0 is set to 1 and we are comparing here if it's equal to 0 um, and if it's equal to 0 that means that uh, v1 is bigger and bigger than x22 gives you invalid command received so let's just go here so we load again from that location the first uh, byte of the packet because you can see here that it stored the first byte of the packet in there um, And we can see here that he's doing this thing, which is shifting, uh, shifting two bits. And then he's doing the load word. One of the functions, uh, one of the features that um, Cutter also has 
is the pseudo code generation sometimes this is useful um, so let's just try to see if we can get to the point where we are not really uh, it, it's not perfect uh, you can get up to the the loop for the receive from but uh, yeah it doesn't go further than that so it's failing a little bit um, maybe with some other options and some other commands it would work but I'm not that versed on uh, R2 so let's just let's just try to figure out this without the pseudo code generation or decompiling so it loads some v0 so we load v0 and this probably yep it will store it into d i think so it shifts two bits to the left and stores it into v1 then it does some it loads a word so two uh, two bytes into v0 it adds uh, v0 as this constant to v0 then it adds two registers so v1 and v0 Oh, and it's loading it. This is the referencing something. Oh, this is interesting. And then he's jumping to it. Is it this the dereference operator? I think it is. And probably that's why it doesn't really know where to go from there on the graph. It doesn't know where to go from there because V0 is undefined. So and it, um, most likely it's going to jump somewhere in here. So let's just try to send uh, the raw this just this command and see what initialization command and see what initialized okay that didn't work very well uh, interesting so let's let's go back again let's trace back so got a big comment before initializing hmm Let's try with a number, no, because it will reply with initialized anyways. Hmm. Is there something missing? Oh, it should be. How do you tell it that it has been initialized? I thought it would be with a comment by itself, an uh, initialization comment, but uh, let's see in the strings if we have some some more tips uh, okay cannot open we don't have received initialization comment in any of these ones here so it might be that uh, ms um, c app actually initialize in some different way than with uh, a command which is a little bit weird uh, i think um, hmm. and this is a half word 
let me just confirm that the half word is what I think it is. <laughs> half word MIPS. Uh, maybe I can just check. No, yeah. Size. Oh no, I'm getting it completely wrong. Yeah, I'm getting it completely wrong. Indeed, half words are two bytes. Yeah, half words are two bytes, so it means that the word is four. Oh yeah, right. Because a double word is eight bytes. Oh, I'm getting old for these things. Uh, no, it's four bytes. Double word is four bytes. So this is a different uh, nomenclature. Or not, I'm just getting it wrong. It's interesting. Because in x86, um, a double word so two words are four bytes and a q word which is in x uh, x64 that's eight bytes and it's it's interesting because in this case half a word is two bytes which is uh, yeah it matches right it doesn't match because then the word in MIPS is the four bytes. Interesting, it's a different uh, instead of being a double word that you have. In, uh, so here it goes. Uh, one of my assumptions about the size of the of the half word goes uh, out the window because I was assuming uh, so a word in x86 is two bytes. So it's a short, so half a word would be one byte. Uh, but apparently not. In MIPS, half a word is two bytes. So let's just make it so. And actually, um, I have this wrong. I also have this wrong. I wasn't sending the things correctly. This is how you actually send stuff. So let's just... Oh, here we go. We have a fail. Let's see. Oh, look. Nice. So we have some more interaction from the two. So clearly we went through this. And we came to the send so we got to the send config area okay okay interesting And by the way, this uh, you have to use this nomenclature, so it actually puts the literal bytes into a string. For those who do not know, uh, well, that's that's basically how it it works uh, in Python uh, 2.0, 2.7. I keep saying 2.0. I don't know why, but anyways, uh, let's just then um, let's poke some eyes on it. Let's just send it. I we know that it's shifting. Uh, we know that it's shifting some. Um, uh, some bytes or some bits in this case. Uh, where it is? Oh, where? Yeah. It 
put this shifting here some bits So let's just start fuzzing it a little bit, initialize so it fails. So it really needs to be really needs to be this initial thing. Is it doing something to V0 because it loads, it stores it in in this memory? Then it's doing the comparison to know whether it's a valid command or not. And then it comes here. weird how can I send for instance the enable command because it's jumping straight to the send config command let's see if we can find it uh, no, 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 no. and once again strings are very useful you can see here can help a lot getting uh, to know what uh, a binary is doing makes uh, analysis a lot easier um, fail to send the kill signal We have here error opening file, and if we see here, error opening file. So we are very, very close. Very, very close. Get scanning status, server not enabled. Okay, so hmm. Okay, so let's just relaunch the application from zero and let's send again the packet. It failed. Okay, let's then touch TMP. Can maybe maybe this file already exists somewhere uh, no there is no such thing um, maybe on the linux apps volume i seriously doubt though no i seriously doubt there is some file but anyways let's just search for it find type file uh, the name is dms.conf nope is there any conf files yep there are some conf files but not dms so let's just make the directory let's touch Let's create just an empty file, dms.conf, and see what other errors uh, we can get from the app. So, most of the, as you can see, most of the research reverse engineering stuff, oh, it succeeded. And we can see here, 
receive the send config command okay and you can see here that uh, it returned empty and succeeded so if I say let's say uh, VI temp DMS conf conf oh, oops, sorry so this is a config file let's run it again mm, it replied uh, empty interesting let's just make sure to be certain oh interesting it's replying with um, with uh, zero 05 which is the command that we sent what if what if we add something here 0x 10 0x 10 so let's just try that see what what it says succeeded what did it say send config hmm. what if I say this to be a 6 what will it reply invalid command 6 and 4 maybe get state and oh okay so it's I think it's simpler than my initial thoughts uh, and failed as well this is failed did not send the risk on signal because nothing is running so this is a lot easier than I thought so it's it's a little bit yeah you see it's um, that's the problem with uh, with reverse well it's not a problem it's the challenge with reverse engineering something especially when you're not that um, versed on the architecture uh, in this case MIPS is that you do a lot of assumptions that in the end are wrong um, and you learn through your mistakes basically and uh, in this case is interesting because even if it's not so what if what if before sending the five the command uh, that starts with a, a five we send one that starts with three yeah with three let's initialized okay so basically we always have to send five so number five this is let's just put it initial command that always needs to be sent So if we send this, it should succeed. And it's basically a send config command. So the initialization command, command is what you call the send config command. That's why I was getting a little bit confused, but it's okay. It's, it's how it works. And then basically let's just start sending uh, now other packets. Uh, other comments and let's start with zero one and see what that comment does probably is the enable succeeded so let's see oh look perfect so let's just copy this and let's just put here the output from the tool it also makes it sometimes when you are revisiting your own code 
is useful to have these sort of things. Um, and then number one, what does number one do? And number one is basically this. And you can see here that now it's in a loop trying to <laughs> restart the BCMM server. Uh, so that's interesting. That's really interesting, actually. That's really interesting. That's just so this is the enable command. Um, we have to probably sort out a way to make this work. Let's try number. Zero two. See what that does. So it doesn't do anything because now it's blocked on this loop of initialization. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to run. So let's just do this. Let's send first. Let's just send first initialization packet that we already saw that needs to be sent. And let's try to send number two. And it failed and it was the server is not running. So it's basically. The disable command. Okay, that's cool. So let's try another packet and henceforth let's just try all of them. Zero three. What is the zero three? It also failed, doesn't really matter. We scan. So it's basically always complaining that the server is not running, so uh, we need to sort out that part. See why uh, the server is failing to to initialize with permission uh, denied. Uh, sorry, now we need packet. Uh, let's see, common number three. X zero zero X zero four. That's standard. Uh, we also get some more things. Zero four off. So we get a string. It's probably saying it's four bytes. So it seems like it's saying it's four bytes, which is great. So you basically have it, the reply is basically the comment that you sent. Zero zero zero, and then uh, basically a half word with four meaning that the next thing is four bytes and it's basically a string that is null terminated it's the string off with the null terminator here um, and it's basically here yeah you can see here returning off okay that's good good So we know that number five is the send config command that basically initializes the, U the application. Let's just try number seven, six, it fails. So let's just try number 10, for instance, see what it prints out. Received invalid command 16, which is 10 in hexadecimal. So what if we send something bigger than 10, than 16 in uh, decimal? Let's say we send 23. It's probably going to fail again. Yeah, it fails. Okay, so 
we have the send config command, the enable command, the disable, the rescan, and the get state. Uh, so if we look at our strings list, we have the disable, the enable, we don't have this one, get, get scanning status, we need to figure out how to send that one. We don't have the rescan one, we haven't figured out how to send it. Uh, how did we? Oh, we did. We did this zero tr three. A zero, uh, yeah. Okay. Send config is the enable. Only the get scanning status is missing. Uh, I guess it's okay. So. Okay, let's try to sort out um, why that specific application is not running. Why when we send the enable command, uh, it basically fails. Probably is trying to create some files. Uh, It's likely that it's creating some files. Let me just check again also if Thirty-four. Interesting. And then set on less than immediate unsign. Because zero four or um, x zero four is less than twenty two, and five by itself is less than. Oh, but if it's bigger, this is interesting because we are sending. Um, oh, okay. No, it doesn't make sense. No, it's, uh, yeah. So why is it calling if it's... I'm getting a little bit confused. I'm getting a little bit confused because V0, it compares it with 5. If it's not five, then it goes like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And if it is five, then we know that it's going to uh, send uh, call the send config thing. And then when it's it does that, it initializes the application and then basically bypasses this step here and goes straight into this one. And it's basically saying that if this value the first the first off word from the packet is less than 22 x 22 then store one in v0 and then we say if v0 is zero then go here Can I have pseudocode for this? Is it? Mm, no, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Doesn't work like that. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's interesting because the x6 is less than x22. So why is it failing? Why is it telling me that the x6 is an invalid command? That's interesting. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. That's just, by the way, this is not needed, but let's send something else. Packet equals x. Zero 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 x zero six it says is uh, invalid, which it shouldn't, right? Because if I do bigger than twenty two, he also says, "Sorry, mate, that doesn't work." 69 okay so let's do that let's um, this is some crazy stuff see how it behaves Thirty-four. It doesn't. Need, it doesn't crash because it doesn't have any buffer overflow in this sense. Uh, let's see. Six zero one. Anyways, maybe I'm just reading the code badly, uh, but apparently we can only send, uh, which is fair. Well, it's just we can only send uh, this command. Still not clear why that would be the case, but let's just try to figure out why the BCMM server is crashing. So. Uh, run console. So let's just do bin busy box sh. Right. Oh yeah. So change the bin handle. Oh. Busy box. So let's just. Oh, wait, there isn't any. Yes, of course, because it's under. Mm, where is it? Where is the. Where is this? This file. BCMM server, I think. Oh, has been. Oh, I see what the problem is. Is uh, yes. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. It's because this is not an executable. I don't have the permissions for. I didn't make this an executable. So let's just. That's probably why it's getting uh, permission denied. Initial, okay, no, sorry. So let's just true. This one needs to be always sent. So let's just this. 
so it initialized so we can now comment it out and we can just do this and it says succeeded oh it worked very nice uh, very nice and then it failed anyways <laughs> it started a little bit better but uh, didn't work so it's complaining basically that um, we haven't set these configuration options uh, and so basically it's uh, that's why it's failing so let's just set these configuration op uh, options vi root fs temp dms config maybe something like that uh, will work maybe and maybe just like this tmp i don't know maybe let's just try that uh, let's send initialization command again yes uh, and now let's send the other one succeeded okay this is not how you set up the configuration options this is not how you set up the configuration options okay that that one is clear that one is clear um, yeah, i think the best option is just to run the binary itself directly maybe it's oh okay um so okay we have to do it another way because we need to be on on the directory where dms.conf is and i want to use the one that is already in the temp um, directory so let's just move here and i'll just make a little bit of a pause because there's something that i need to fix so i'll be back in a second Okay, sorry about that. I just had to sort out something. Okay, we're back. Uh, yes, so we were doing okay. And now let's do a spin DCM and server. Just try it. Yeah, perfect. Oh, so this was built in 2013 so he's even a little bit older than the compilation date for uh, busybox and even the msc app uh, so that's interesting the media server control app um, whew, how can we know exactly which I think the easiest way would be to then just open BCM server. Maybe we'll have some idea of what is going around, what's this application doing. Let's just paste here. Let's select desktop, BCM server, open don't do any analysis 
Okay, let's look at strings. As usual, just look at strings first. Uh, oh, look, the last person compiling was called Robbie, maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. It definitely we saw this string, right? CM, maybe cable, mon uh, mo uh, modem, Linux, uh, 338 version, something, something. And if you look here, cable, modem, Linux 109. So, uh, uh, well, I'm assuming it's cable, modem, CM. This, and since this is a cable router slash modem, whatever, so it might make sense. Anyways, uh, maybe we want some information. Well, we want some information. Uh, about how this thing works, this configuration file works. Uh, I seriously doubt there will be something maybe Maybe in some functions, maybe in some functions with config, conf in the name, parse tmf. Well, I didn't want the parse, I wanted the save. I wanted to see how it saves. Uh, let's just conf as well. There's, oh, sorry, conf. Yeah, dms conf and parse tms conf option. So it's not really. Well, let's just. Oh, it's an oh, it comes from a library. It's an import. And uh, what library might this be? From interesting. Um, well, I wanted to make this thing work a little bit. Okay. Okay, so this didn't help me that much. I probably will be able to find which library this is. Um, I should look at the Maybe this one does look like it, no? It does look like it. Uh, so let's just close this one. Um, this is me just being lazy, trying to guess which library it is, uh, instead of actually looking at the proper elf. Uh, file. But here it is, parse DMS conf options. Mm -hmm. Scroll, oh, okay, let's just do some Uh, oh, mm, sorry. Not how you do that. That like this. Uh, okay, let's create a function here. Okay. Oh, it's a big function, eh? Looks like it. So let's look at the graph. Makes it it's oh it's quite slow. Well, taking taking consideration this is running in a VM with some limited resources. Uh, but this is like really slow. Really slow. So I'm just gonna look at the disassembly. It's easier. Or it's faster at least, not easier, but faster. So temp. Uh, 
it's also not referencing uh, the strings very well but it's possible that the conf file is not a text file but It seems to be. Yes. So let's look at the strings. Parse mass conf. Model name, model URL, presentation URL, file extension. Medi tier equals. That is interesting because here it complains the HTML root tier is not set while Oh, did I, didn't I save it? <laughs> this is interesting. Maybe I didn't save the file. Didn't I? Yeah, okay. Let's try again. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is me uh, not doing things properly. And probably I didn't save the file and that's why we were getting that error so it's a simple it's like simple configuration file so um, let's just do that oh, okay so it's working Okay, let's see, see again, uh, it's, well, it is, I can kill it afterwards. So let's enable the, oh look, it already generated something in the configuration. So debug log, let's say is uh, temp slash debug dot log, and debug param equals maybe a one or a three let's just put a number maybe it indicates verbosity okay so um ps ef pipe grab bcmm server uh, let's just uh, sudo kill minus nine uh, copy should have killed yeah let's try again hmm okay segmentation fault probably is related with this debug param so let's just try that maybe that's the reason why yeah it seems to be the case Okay, let's three, two, eight, four, and let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Do we have a cat? Yeah, we do have a cat. Cat and. Or ls, let's just do an ls first. Oh, we have a log. Got debug dot log. Nothing. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's just exit now. Uh, let's do this. Let's get back to our original objective. 
let's say let's initialize things uh, python test.py succeeded okay, so we initialized the media server control application let's now try to launch the media server oh it failed again with the same error so am i is the file being erased for some reason oh it is it got it got erased for some reason don't know why let's try again um slash temp slash temp and media div equals slash temp so let's try that again let's try that again so as you can see uh, reverse engineering and understanding how things work is basically trial and error most of the times uh, or at least there's a lot of trial and error involved and that's how you learn as well so it succeeded so it's launching but it failed again while I already uh, sorry probably the initialization command is cleaning up this temp file so let's just okay let's do this let's see what we have here uh, let's uh sorry let's do something media dear equals slash temp okay just oh, just that let's send the initialization command succeeded okay let's just see it cleared out the configuration so so basically the initialization command looks like it needs some more things in it because it's clearing out the media uh, the dms.conf file so this is interesting this is very re really interesting so let's just close this one we don't need it or do we need it okay let's just leave it open for now let's see here we receive the enable command okay the enable command enable child process blah 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 oh this is how it launches the server exit uh, exit in child process in child process target server where is the send config i'm almost betting i know how it is is something uh, yeah i think it's basically a bunch of strings uh, with just just the the raw just the configuration file like uh, without any specific fields just I'm guessing okay okay scan command ready to send Jesus. Oh, here it is. Received send config. 
Okay, it writes. It opens the file, probably is opening. Yeah, it's opening the DMS conf file as read, by the way. UID, it's copying the UID apparently. And it closes the file then, then it opens it again as, let me guess, write. Looks like it's gonna open it as write for sure. Uh, and then it writes down probably just the UID. Then it closes it, then we go, so it's here, you can see here it's referencing, oh yes, cool. So it's referencing our buffer, starting uh, in uh, F0, and then it's adding 4 bytes, clearly. <laughs> and then it's basically doing uh, a little bit of a string. trying to find this string ctt underscore test equals one dla dlna ctt also it's trying to find and then he's setting some environment variables and we also have on our output somewhere in here um, i think we already have in our output in some of the cases, this SCTT, DCC, whatever. Anyways, maybe I'm just. But I, I saw this string somewhere. Somewhere. Maybe in the strings list. Uh, and that's it, really. Uh, And I think it's just that I uh, just send some string. So, so let's just do that. Let's just uh, received send config command. So let's just try that. Uh, initialization packet. We have this. So what we f found as well, for instance, with the um, reply packet for with the off string. Is that you had the it had the command and then it had zero 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 and then it had like or well not zero 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 it had x4 a, a half word or uh, two bytes to indicate the length including the null termination character so that's the reply in this case for the initialization packet from what we saw in the, the code it just basically send this and then just send for instance media media dear equals slash temp for instance let's just try that succeeded let's see nope it didn't work okay it didn't work let's initialize this see that again nope didn't work okay so it might be missing some more some more things let's try to look at the code again oh, well. 
So it is an F, right? Received send config. Can I create a function here? Like just crazy? I don't think uh, it doesn't make much sense, does it? Uh, oh, I just wanted a graph for this. Makes it so much easier to look at code. Anyways, uh, received send config. Because here is already looking at this. Here it is, right? And there's this. So that's the else. Let's try to make this a function. Maybe it, even though it doesn't have a, um, it doesn't have um, stack initialization or anything like that. It's probably gonna, not going to work, but let's just try it. Uh, function name, I don't know. Send config. Thank you for ignoring me, but oh, it does work. Well, that's great. Oh, it makes my life so much easier. God damn it. Whew. So probably this is some error handling. Uh, oh, I hope this branching is correct. So DMS conf. It's getting file gets, it's getting the contents of the file, it is doing string lens, UID, UID, then is string copying stuff, is closing the file and then is going back, uh, and it's going back where, where is the blue line, blue line is coming here. And then he's saying this MSC or er, opening file. So he's opening the file. If it gives you an error, it will give you an error. If not, it will write something into the file. And that's the oh, sorry. And that's the thing. It should. It should write that buffer into the file because this is, this, that's exactly what it's doing here. I think uh, because it's adding four, so it skips the first four bytes of the packet, and then you can see here in v a1, which a0 is the file, a1 is the buffer, a2 is the size. A2 is the size because A2 it's most likely the size yeah because it comes from a zero 
Hmm. What is um, 0, 05E? Uh, let's see if we can find out. It must be set somewhere in here. Oh well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not in here. Let's just go up a little bit. 5E. Five E. Hmm. Okay, let's assume that's the size. I don't want to go straight this disassembly scroll. Uh, okay, should be writing it down. Does look like it, right? But while we are so, if we change this UID to F, let's just do that. Let's clean this one. Let's do that. So is it still F? Yeah, still F. Let's do that succeeded it's still f okay but it didn't written down anything else uh, do we have anything on var no not really so it's getting a little bit late as well uh, we have been at it uh, almost two hours now, so I'm just going to try and sort this one out. Um, and then we're going to end the stream. Uh, uh, let me just see what we do more. Okay, and then it goes back to the loop. Interesting because everything points it to being um, maybe I'm wrong. Well, definitely I'm wrong because it's not doing what I thought it would. Um, hmm. What is a zero? What's a zero? something in a zero a zero open okay oh a zero is the open file um, yeah this is too big what am I doing this doesn't make sense um, so it's opening the file And that will be a zero. Doesn't make sense.
makes sense maybe v0 is the return value yeah i think v0 is the return value yeah and then it's comparing it Basically, if it fails, that's where it goes here or error opening file. Otherwise, it comes here, loads from the packet. Oh, V0. Saves the pointer to the file to V1. Then on v0 it probably loads the length and it adds to v0 four more bytes i'm not getting this not understanding very well this one then it basically moves v0 which should be buffer v1 so what we're gonna do to make things a lot easier is just uh, let's just be naughty and do something like oh, sorry packet plus equals slash x uh, 41 multiplied by let's say I don't know 10 just do that uh, 16 let's make it 16 succeeded I'm really trying hard with this one. It's not writing anything now. That's my problem. Say empty. Oh, sorry. not doing anything maybe I need uh, a UID let's say let's say okay let's say um, let's actually copy let's just copy this one and let's add it this let's just try it um, let's change the number to something else let's change the number to two succeeded <laughs> it seems to succeed already no it didn't change it okay <laughs> Oh well, that's nice. That's really nice. Let's just try it like this. No, didn't do anything. Let's run it again. didn't change it at all and what if I do this 
what does it do it clears out yeah because it didn't form find the uid thing um, I need to figure out how this works. Because uh, it doesn't, from the disassembly, it doesn't do, doesn't seem to do anything very special about it. About, with the packet, I mean. Bunch of opens, and then here, it just gets the packet in v1 and then it just writes the packet uh, let me just check something here linux write function hmm. write to file description right fd count nothing like this it's this one yeah it's this one so write is fd so file description with descriptor which is our a0 so it's is our a0 here then the next one is the buffer which is v0 and v0 comes from 0x5c with an added four and then our our can count comes from v1 which basically this is the buffer the the the, the, the buffer am i getting this right yeah, I'm getting this right, yeah? Here it is. Size n bytes. Yeah, I'm getting this right. That's the, the right function that I'm looking at. Um, so what is this 5C? I need to figure out what this 5C is. And this 5E. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Uh, let me see if. Oh wait, it's not 5e that has the buffer, is it? No, the buffer is 5c actually. Yeah, yeah, the buffer is 5c, not. Uh, yeah, my bad. My bad. Yeah. The buffer is 5c, is this one. So v0 is in fact the buffer 5c. And v1 is the size which is in 5e. Is it possible that 5e? Where, where does this 5e come from? What does this 5e as? Um, okay, let's just... Whoop. Or better off, better yet. 
let's just move down send to and then we get to the receive function we need to know what 5a is uh, not not no doesn't seem to have anything is it possible that it doesn't have anything um, can I search for things Searching. Well, I didn't find anything. Okay. So, not good, not good. Uh, where was I? So, in any case, let me see. Uh, load so it will have as s uh, how do you in mips mips s l o probably is it mips SL no yeah S no S H U instruction maybe no Okay, so it doesn't have that solid instruction. So let's just uh, try and search for. So yeah, so that's. I don't know if it has wild cards. Okay, let's try to manipulate the size of the buffer. Let's say it's x. Oops, sorry x zero eight zero eight and let's uh, let's say zero eight here see if it works and let's oh, sorry let's say it's not FFF but something that is actually printable oh here it is we have <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a memory dump of some sorts maybe uh, let's 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 try to start from the beginning yep we have some weird memory dump 
Okay, so we are at least getting somewhere. It does print AAA. So maybe we need to add packet plus equals x zero zero. So but before that null terminator, let's add forty two. Let's see what happens. And Okay, even with the null terminator, it still goes on forever. Uh, it still goes on. Let me see. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so we did zero eight. So zero eight. Let's make zero nine. Uh, zero eight, and then see, because we aren't actually controlling the buffer; it's just dumping everything, uh, which is not pretty. Or uh, well, it's a memory leak of some sorts. Nope, getting worse. So what if I say zero to? Oh, maybe I know what it is. Okay, I know what it is because probably it's uh, because I'm setting it as a byte and probably it's two bytes. The length is two bytes. Um, so yeah, it's it's probably that. Uh, it's probably that the length is two bytes. So let's make it two bytes. Oh, sorry, zero zero. And we should ignore the rest of the file, I think. No, it printed out zero two. Uh, oh wow. So I printed out zero two because I'm a little bit silly, but it's it's actually just getting one byte, I think. Um, the length, otherwise it wouldn't have. Maybe it would. Maybe it won't. Um, sorry, wrong file. Uh, maybe it would print. No, yeah, definitely. Okay, so we have progress. We do have progress. So we can see here. Okay, uh, we have. Let's just make it easier on us. So we do packet. Oh, packet equals zero two is the length here that's the length and then basically it doesn't really matter what we put here so we can just do media dear equals slash temp and that's by the way um, how can I do this better uh, let's do Temporary equals media dear equals temp. Uh, how do I do that? just let's just be lazy well that's not being lazy but uh, uh, this sucks um, but I want it to be Maybe with format? Does it work with format? Um, anyways, let's just count the characters. One, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So for the life of me, I wouldn't be able to do so it's less I think it's D right that's 13 I think yeah let's try that and yeah so we are getting somewhere in any case, uh, I think we'll just leave it as it is for today because it's already quite late. Uh, we have been at it at, uh, well, two hours and almost 25 minutes. Uh, and, um, and uh, yeah. I'm not sure maybe okay let's just let's just finish this one uh, let's just make sure we have everything we can set things properly and this is a C because it doesn't take much more effort than this so we should have oh maybe it does take more effort than this oh interesting oh yeah because it's the entire file yeah 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 so it writes the entire file so no need no more need for uh, this um, how do you do the um, what is the maybe yeah I can just I can just do that slash n maybe slash n so the so 13 14 so let's just because for the life of me I'm not able to do X conversions even if my life uh, depended on it so let's just do 22 in X that's hmm? oh yeah 10 is a exactly so 22 is 16 actually so let's just make it 16 16 should be okay I'm getting actually tired uh, so it's oh it's not perfect yet so 16 Let's do 26 then. 1A. 1A. Is that it? Is that the right answer? I'm getting. Yeah, that's the right answer. So now we initialized it properly, apparently. Let's at least, well, at least it has the. Uh, the right things, apparently. So let's just do this and send the enable packet now see what it does yep it seems to yeah it seems to be running so let's try to send the disable command even though it's running yep it worked so awesome this is really cool. So just to sum up, so we figure out the functionality for the um, 
Media Server Control app, MSC app. It's the name of the binary. It's basically a simple uh, application that controls this uh, BCMM server uh, binary, which is basically the digital media server, probably the one that provides the DLNA uh, capability, so like streaming and all these sort of things, uh, which is nice. So. I hope you guys enjoyed it, um, and uh, I'll uh, I'll be doing more of these uh, streams in the future. Um, and then, yeah, see you then. Cheers. Bye bye.